Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to start a new topic, uh, also related to electromagnetic uh, waves, uh, and that's one of the most important application of uh, electromagnetic waves, uh, the radio. Um, so this lecture will be about how to. Well, it's a very, very basic and very fundamental. Um, piece of knowledge about how people started thinking about um, uh, receiving radio signals. Uh, I'm not going to talk about how to transmit it, maybe that would be a subject of another lecture, but this is about how to receive radio signal and, well, basically understand it. So we can use it like radio, for instance, to transmit the sound. Um, okay. So this is about some very first, very, very fundamental, very basic ideas which came to somebody's mind um, when they invented the way how we can receive the radio. By that time, people understood um, certain concepts about electromagnetic fields and they did understand that we are all surrounded by electromagnetic fields which are oscillating with different frequencies, different amplitudes, um, different phases, etc. And there are many sources of these oscillations. Well, let's start with our um, Sun and, uh, and Earth itself. It has a magnetic field and uh, it, it, it's all changing, plus all the electric devices which we are using. Uh, they're all generate they're all generating certain um, signals electromagnetic waves electromagnetic oscillations so we are all surrounded by this well well we do see some of them so if electromagnetic oscillations are within certain frequencies our eye is sens sensitive enough to, to, to feel it that's what that's the, what the light is now, the other frequencies greater than the frequencies of visible spectrum or, or less than that, we don't really see, but they still exist. It's all different frequencies. Certain frequencies we see with our eyes, other frequencies we don't, but we do have certain tools, certain devices which can uh, feel it, measure it, uh, react, uh, on, on these waves, etc. And the radio is one of those devices. So it somehow accepts the certain electromagnetic uh, oscillations and converts it into um, oscillations of the air, which we can uh, hear with ear. Okay. Now, what's the most important problem? For instance, we know how to transmit certain radio frequency and the uh, question is how can we receive this particular frequency considering we have so many different sources of electromagnetic oscillations and uh, somehow we have to select from all these different sources with all different frequencies etc one particular frequency where we would like to listen to a particular song okay now uh, to understand that concept, we really have to be very much familiar with the concept of forced oscillations. Now, the, um, what's interesting, and that was actually part of the previous lecture, I mentioned that equations of oscillations within um, uh, a circuit which contains inductor and uh, capacitor, these equations are exactly the same as oscillations of mechanical um, me uh, mechanical oscillations, like uh, an object on a spring, for instance. The equations are exactly the same, and principles are exactly the same. So it's very important for you to uh, understand whatever was um, studied in uh, mechanical oscillations uh, topic of this course, and um, in particular, there are two different lectures. One of them is called force oscillations. One 
and now there's force oscillations too. And in the force oscillation too, I was talking about resonance, which is extremely important for the subject of this lecture. And also there is a problem following um, the force uh, oscillations uh, number two. This is a problem number four uh, in, in that topic of mechanical oscillations. Um, and that's basically about force oscillations when you have a conductor and you have, uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, you have capacitor, you have inductor, and you have a resistor uh, in the RLC circuit, as we call it. So everything in that particular um, problem, problem number four of mechanical oscillations topic, is exactly applicable to oscillations in the RL, in RLC circuit or LC circuit, as we will talk about today. So it's very important that you understand all those equations, the solutions to these equations. I will use the basically uh, whatever was there as given in this particular case. Because again, e again, equations are exactly the same, just different letters. Next. So we were talking about um, the space around us filled with different electromagnetic uh, oscillations, waves of different amplitudes, different um, uh, frequencies, different phases, etc. Okay, question is how we can select from all these chaotic oscillations <coughs> excuse me, oscillations of particular frequency where we know used for transmission of specific signal which we are interested in. For example, you would like to tune on station such and such, 770 AM for instance. Well, that's basically the uh, uh, wavelengths or, or a frequency which characterizes a specific oscillations. And we would like to select it from all other um, frequencies of oscillations of uh, different sources including even those from far stars. They also, it, it's weak uh, uh, electromagnetic oscillations, but since we see the light from the star, <coughs> we definitely uh, uh, understand that there is some electromagnetic uh, oscillations, because light is the electromagnetic oscillations. So even from far stars we have electromagnetic waves. Okay, so now we will talk about how LC circuit, a circuit which contains inductor and capacitor, can help in selecting a specific signal out of these chaotic conglomerate of all other uh, waves which are filling our space around us. Okay, so let's start with a very simple thing. For example, you have some kind of a conductor. Let's say it's uh, just a piece of wire. And let's say we just connect it with the ground. So it's whatever kind of current exists in this wire, it all goes down to the earth. So this is how we will um, use the symbol we are using for uh, this piece of wire. Now, why do I need a piece of wire? Why do I need a conductor? Well. You remember the Faraday's law of induction. Whenever you have oscillating magnetic field, it creates uh, oscillating current, some kind of a current, um, in, uh, in any conductor. So I just used the piece of wire, and all these chaotic uh, oscillations of electromagnetic field around us will be reflected in this conductor. So everything is based on this Faraday's law of induction. Electric current in this particular wire is inducted, is induced uh, um, by the uh, oscillations of electromagnetic field around it. Okay, so from something which I don't really feel, don't really see, the electromagnetic waves around us, we have, make, we have made a first step 
we have reflected all these chaotic oscillations in a piece of wire. Well, this is something tangible, because if we have a current in the piece of wire, we can measure it, we can basically have some device working off it, etc. So, we have first step we have done, we have captured the radio signals, well, I'm using the word radio signals, but ac actually it's electromagnetic waves, <coughs> oscillations of electromagnetic field. So we have caught all these chaotic radio signals around us into something quite tangible, which we can use. Okay, great. But inside of this wire, we have exactly the same chaotic conglomerate uh, re result of um, superposition of all different uh, oscillations with all different frequencies, uh, phases, uh, amplitudes, etc. How can we select one particular? Okay. Now, to help us with this particular process, um, uh, we can use a concept called resonance. So again, let me go back to mechanical oscillations. It was explained in the lecture um, uh, related to uh, forced oscillations. It's second lecture, forced oscillations number two. <coughs> so the concept is, if you have, well, let's say, let's go back to mechanical. If you have, let's say, um, a swing, okay, the swing goes back and forth, back and forth. It has its own um, natural frequency of oscillations. So, if I will not apply any forces, it will just go back and forth, back and forth, and if there is no friction, it will go in, uh, uh, indefinitely, without stop, with a particular frequency. And the frequency depends on the length and, I mean, the characteristics, basically, of this uh, particular swing, right? So, it's a characteristic of swing. No matter how um, uh, far we uh, uh, move our uh, swing from the initial position and then let it go, it will still go with the same frequency, regardless of my initial condition. Frequency is inherent to the construction of this particular swing. Now, let's assume that you have the same swing and you're trying to apply force to, to, to basically um, uh, uh, to swing it further and further. If your force is also um, uh, periodic with a certain frequency, only in case your frequency is the same as the frequency of the, uh, of the swings, you will get a real result. You will basically, uh, the swing will, will, will go uh, to greater and greater amplitude. So amplitude will be increasing. And graphically, you can uh, develop it with this. That would be the movement of the end of the swing of the initial, of the neutral position. It will be greater and greater if your force is in sync. So it's increasing the oscillations of the swing. Same thing happens with LC circuit. So if you have an LC circuit, which we were, which we were talking, we were talking about RLC with a resistor as well, but let's forget about resistor, let's forget about friction in the mechanical uh, oscillations, and we will forget about resistor in, um, in the electronic oscillations. This is electronic oscillator without resistors, without basically resistance. So we have only capacity of the capacitor, capacitance and induct, in, in, inductance of inductor. Okay? So based on just this construction, now if you remember the previous lecture, I was charging the capacitor and let it go. And after this, capacitor was discharging to this direction, but since there is an induction, the magnetic field would uh, induce uh, electric current, and not only it will go down to complete zero, it will go more, and it will 
change the charge to an opposite and then back and then again this direction and that direction. So that was last lecture. Now, that means that this particular device acts like our swing. It has its own uh, frequency of oscillation, which it was derived as, as this. This is its own frequency of oscillation, which depends only on the parameters of this particular uh, circuit. So, I'm thinking, well, not me, <laughs> obviously, people who invented radio were thinking that out of all these chaotic oscillations, if we will able, if we were, if we will be able to induce additional force, inducting force, induced force, if you wish, onto this uh, circuit, which would exactly equal in frequency to um, the own frequency of the LC circuit, then these oscillations will start uh, increasing. Well, of course, resistance, uh, natural resistance, will not allow it to go in infinitely high, but it will definitely be enhanced. So the signal which comes here, if it comes here with the same frequency, will be enhanced. So the oscillations with this particular frequency will be of a greater amplitude. Now, if we will have all these oscillations applied to this particular um, LC uh, circuit, well, we will induce all these currents which are oscillating here in this wire. We will induce additional electro motor, electromotive force onto, let's say, on this inductor. But some of those frequencies which we are inducing will be basically will not affect the amplitude so if they were weak they will be weak this thing will not will not in, uh, will not increase their amplitude but one particular frequency which is equal to this one so out of this chaotic one particular type of oscillations those which have this frequency they will actually be enhanced because they will work exactly like we were working with with the swing if our external force exactly equal in periodic movement to the movement of the swing swing will be um, uh, uh, moving further and further from the center line right same thing here so only one will be enhanced the frequency this which corresponds to this now, how can we transfer these oscillations uh, to, um, let's say, to this inductor to generate a little bit more force? Well, we can do it this way. We can put some kind of a transformer here and connect it. So the oscillations here of the current, which are basically induced by electromagnetic oscillations of everything, whatever happens uh, in the whole space, they will all result in oscillating current here. Oscillation current here is like a transformer, basically. Will uh, if, if there is some kind of a, a ferromagnetic uh, uh, connection between these uh, two um, inductors. So it will transfer here. So the oscillations here, with all the different frequencies, I mean, result of superposition of all these waves. It's, it's, it, it looks really very chaotic, but it's actually a sum of sinusoidal oscillations with different amplitudes and uh, frequencies and, 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 and uh, phases. So it will be induced onto this. So this thing will have basically two sources uh, of, of energy. The energy of initial capacitor which goes back and forth, back and forth, and that's a concrete frequency. And also it will have some kind of a push from this connection. And the push will be 
a, a sum of all the pushes from all the different frequencies of all the different um, oscillations which are happening in this wire which reflect everything which happens in our space so everything will be reflected here but only one particular frequency will fall on this one <coughs> and only this one will be basically enhanced so after some time well actually a very short time the oscillations in this particular circuit they will still contain lots of uh, uh, oscillations with uh, different frequencies different amplitudes etc but all those which do not correspond to this will have a smaller amplitude than the one particular oscillations with this particular uh, frequency because it goes into resonance with the own frequency of oscillations of this uh, LC circuit. So the result of this will be a sum of one particular strong sin sinusoidal wave like this one and many more, m many uh, different oscillations with different um, uh, ampli amplitudes but uh, different frequencies at different amplitudes and different phases etc but they all will be very small so as a result of the summing of this thing I will have a signal which basically goes like this so it's still a useful thing because this is definitely uh, something which we can use in uh, some device which converts this particular uh, frequency into some kind of a um, uh, oscillations of air around us so we can hear we can hear it with our ear all right so obviously um, the better selection of one particular frequency is the more difference we will have in the useful uh, wave relative to all others which are, are actually a noise and uh, different that that's what actually defines the quality of the of the radio reception and there are different devices etc now do not think that this is it that this is the, re the, the solution because obviously this is idea on the top of it this idea was developed many times throughout the whatever hundred of years hundred well hundred and fifty maybe years um, since invention of the radio um, and the quality is gradually increasing so basically I, I wanted you to just familiarize yourself what is the main principle on which the radio actually reception is um, I, I, is actually created and that's the principle principle is a resonance between all the different chaotic electromagnetic waves which we can catch with an antenna and one particular frequency which actually is a characteristic of our uh, circuit and only the frequency which corresponds would actually be selected now the quality of selection is a different question obviously so um, now that one particular circuit has one particular frequency of oscillation own frequency which means that one particular circuit can actually select only one particular type of waves waves which have this particular frequency now how can we tune our radio to different stations with different um, uh, frequencies of uh, uh, transmission well here it is okay this is a symbol for a variable capacitor now what is a capacitor basically it's two plates you can just you know think about the simple capacitor two plates conducting plates on certain distance 
Now, depending on the distance between the blades and their uh, area, we have different capacitance of the capacitor. Now, what if I will be able to do it this way? So I'm shifting one plate relative to another. Well, I'm basically changing the common area where electrons can actually uh, act um, uh, among themselves. So I'm changing the capacitance. So this will be a smaller capacit capacitance than this one. So whenever I'm shifting, I'm basically reducing the common area between these two plates. And that's the principle of variable capacitor. capacitor. I mean, the, the, the first principle, again, any device uh, has been transformed many times, but idea is exactly the same. My purpose is to introduce you to idea. So idea is that there is a variable capacitor. Now, actually, you can, you can also do the cap uh, variable inductor, because, for instance, you have some kind of a center uh, uh, ferromagnetic uh, core inside the spiral. Well, by lifting and uh, putting it up and down, uh, you will change the inductance of the inductor. So both induct inductance and capacitance can be variable. You just have to, you know, make a special device for this. If you, ha if you have an inductor, you can obviously create a variable inductor. If you have a capacitor, you can create a variable capacitor. Okay, so by using the variable capacitor, we can change one of these and change this. And that's how you tune to a specific um, uh, frequency. Um, obviously, you can have some kind of a scale where you see exactly what's your uh, particular frequency which you are trying to tune in. And uh, based on that, you're changing your own um, uh, frequency of oscillations of your um, LC uh, circuit. And that's why you're selecting a different uh, uh, oscillations, different frequency of oscillations of electromagnetic field, which is a different um, radio station, for example. And that's basically what I wanted to talk about today. Again, two things, very important. Um, go back to the lecture um, uh, uh, on mechanical oscillations. So you go to unisor.com, uh, Physics for Teens, that's the name of the course. You go to Waves, that's part of the course which dedicated to, to Waves. And then the first topic is mechanical oscillation. And among the mechanical oscillation, you will see the um, particular lecture on uh, forced oscillations, forced oscillations one and two. And there are equations there, solutions, differential equations, etc. Now, this lecture is without any kind of differential equations or anything like that, because I'm just referring you to those previously already uh, delivered to you. And equations are exactly the same for mechanical oscillations as they are for this um, LLC circuit. So that's very important. And another thing is, don't think that you understand completely how radio is working. This is just the beginning. This is the main idea from which something started. And then the whole <coughs> development for 150 years or so uh, have to be applied on the top of this idea to get something which you can use today and which delivers you a very clear high quality, high fidelity uh, quality of the sound. So that's basically a very long um, history of development. If I will show you right now schema which is significantly <laughs> different than this one, schema of the real radio, um, well, if you didn't see it yourself, obviously before, you'll be surprised how complex it is because you have to put lots of other different filters, um, uh, different uh, other devices which increase the amplitude, for instance, of the, um, of the signal, because even after it's uh, enhanced by these oscillations, it has to be smoothed so you don't have these kind of tooth-like 
um, uh, extensions to a, reg to, to a regular sinusoidal wave. Um, so you have to smooth the whole thing, etc. It's a lot of thought in the contemporary radio, a lot of uh, very engineering, ingenuity uh, and engineering uh, solutions. And uh, what's important is, again, the principle. My purpose right now is to introduce you to a principle, and that's the one. So that's the beginning. That's how the first inventors of radio, whether it's, you know, I don't want to get involved in who actually did it first, doesn't really matter, but whoever did it, they were using something like this to start. And then the whole development actually started. It's always more difficult to come up with a principle than to develop very gradually, step by step. You see, the very first principle is a huge jump. Um, but then, when this jump is made and people understood how the whole thing can be made, um, then they started to increase, to improve, to, to develop, etc., etc., and then there is a gradual improvement throughout the time. So after the first jump, after the first invention, so to speak, then it's much easier and smoother, and then many people are involved. Jump is usually related to one particular person or a group of people, and then uh, it's spread around and, and, and people take over basically the whole concept and develop it to whatever the uh, quality of, uh, in this case, radio we have right now. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.